Hey everybody, welcome to our first reading lesson that we're gonna do for online learning. And if you guys remember correctly, we left off on focusing on the illustrations and text. We had read that whale article, we were using the illustrations in that, of course, until things got cut unceremoniously short. But now we are gonna move into literature. Literature being text that is something that you might read for entertainment, has a plot, usually a make-believe story. And today we are gonna focus on using illustrations in literature to help you comprehend the text. So illustrations in literature. As third graders this year, what you guys are expected to be able to do is to explain how illustrations in the text contribute to the meaning of the words in the text. So what we're gonna do here is we're just gonna go over what we've kind of touched on already in regards to fic uh, nonfiction. And then we'll read a little story today. Just a little excerpt. Mr. G's just going to read aloud. So you guys aren't going to really have any particular writing that you're going to do today. We will have some tomorrow, but we're just kind of scratching the surface with this standard. So when we are talking about illustrations, we're talking about any visual uh, thing that's in a either nonfiction text or a fictional text um, that's going to help us understand the story a little bit better. Um, pictures in the story can help us understand things better. And that's what we're going to work on today. And when we want to use the pictures in the story to help us, here's a strategy we can try. Five steps. Before you start reading, before you do anything, look at the pictures. Then after you've looked at the pictures, you're going to read the words for enjoyment, just to get a feel for the story, the main characters, maybe any problems, the setting. And then you're going to read the text a second time, and this time looking at the pictures extra closely. And ask yourself, why did the author include those illustrations? What do they add to the story? Do they emphasize the setting, mood, or the traits of the characters? Now, usually there's going to be a question paired along with your reading. So look at the question, and then when you have to respond to that question, then after you have the question in your head, take notes or underline and highlight the parts of the text or the images that are going to help you understand the main points of the text. Remember, taking notes, annotating text, highlighting, whatever it may be, is going to help your understanding. And then you're going to write your response using the details you highlighted. So as you know, illustrations can add a lot to our understanding of what we're reading. And today you're going to see that in a text, just a little small section of a text called Poppleton in Spring by Cynthia Ryland. Uh, it's an example of a complex literature text. And the illustrations can be used to explain how they add to what can be understood by just reading the words. So reading the words will only give you a little bit of the understanding that you need. Sometimes you need to take a look at the illustration. So that's what we're focusing on this week and for the next few lessons that we do. So listen closely, make sure you're comfortable, get headphones if you need them. I'm gonna be reading as I read this short little section to you and then watch how I apply a reading strategy that will help me answer a question that I will um, explain how pictures contribute to the understanding of what I'm reading. Short little section coming up in this next slide. Before we even read the text, take a look at that picture. What are some of the things that you notice? Well, off the bat, I can see for some reason he has got rocks in his room. He's got marbles, it looks like, or something on the floor. You probably have noticed stacked pots here, books, pencils. Do you think this character cleans their room very well? I don't know. And based on the title, Poppleton in Spring, maybe he has to do some spring cleaning. Has anyone else done any of that? Anyways, he, his room is a mess. So now we've looked at the pictures. Now let's read the text. It's time for spring cleaning, said Poppleton one morning. He looked around his house. He had so many things. Things and things. There was a box of unmatched socks. There were jars of old buttons. One whole shelf was full of rocks. Poppleton liked his things so much, but he knew he had to clean. 
I'll take some things to Cherry Sue, he said. Then I'll have more room. So when you looked at this picture, like we said, we kind of have a clearer image now because we right off the bat saw a bunch of things. In the text, it said this was a jar of old buttons. We also have rocks on the shelf. Poppleton really doesn't want to get rid of these things. But now I want you to think about what is the purpose of including this picture in the text? So now here's the question. Suppose my teacher asked me to answer this. How does the illustration contribute to your understanding of the setting and the story? How does the illustration contribute or add to my understanding of the setting? What is setting? Well, setting I know can mean the time that a story takes place or the place in which a story happens. And I know that that picture was included to tell me what Poppleton's room looks like. What specifically is the mess here? We can see the buttons and the mismatched socks over here and the rocks and all this mess. So now we're gonna turn this into an answer. Here's my response. This section of the story, Poppleton in Spring, describes the setting of this part of the story. The illustration shows Poppleton's room with all of the things he wants to clean on the floor and on shelves. The illustration helps me to understand the setting of this part of the story because it shows Poppleton's room and it shows all of the things he needs to clean up, like his jars of buttons, shelf full of rocks, and mismatched socks. So I have the task that I answered and I used the picture to help me gather information, not just about what is being said, but what I can see as well. So that was your lesson for today. And we'll pick back up with some practice tomorrow. And remember, 30 minutes of independent reading today. You guys have a choice and um, enjoy yourselves and have a great rest of your day.